questions and I'll help you. So have a good one. Bye bye. Hey, this is Wendy with Loaves and Dishes, and today we are making oxtails. And oh my goodness, if you've never had oxtails, now's the time to try, especially if you have an Instant Pot. They are so easy to do in the Instant Pot. I have a couple of ways to do them. There's a recipe on my website where I give you a marinade. And then here in this video, this tastes virtually the same, and you don't have to marinate. So it's up to you. Either way, the first thing that you need to do is chop some vegetables. And here I am chopping two pretty large carrots. Um, because they disintegrate <laughs> almost completely, you don't need to go to the trouble of stripping the, um, using a peeler and peeling the outside edges. You can if you want, but you don't have to, just so that you wash them good and they're clean, which is what I did here. Um, you're gonna chop them a little bit chunky. However you particularly like carrots is fine. If you like larger pieces, then cut larger, larger pieces. If you like smaller pieces, then go smaller, but just know they're gonna really cook down. And if they're very small, they might disappear completely. Of course, if you've got kids, <laughs> maybe you want them to disappear completely, but that's up to you. Um, then we're gonna do green onions, and I'm just gonna tell you, these mostly add color more than anything, because you're also gonna add a whole onion. Um, if you, let's talk about some substitutions. If you don't have green onions, you didn't get any when you were at the store, just add a little onion powder. Um, you could also add some parsley, you know, something for a little green color is, um, but these two are gonna mostly disintegrate, so chop them a little big. You can see these particular green onions that I got are huge, I mean, they're enormous. Um, so you don't have to be real picky with the amounts. If you only have two green onions, fine. If you wanna add an entire bunch, fine. You're not gonna mess up the flavor. It's just adding some onion flavor and some green color. Um, next, we're gonna chop a whole onion. I'm using a Vidalia onion. I would recommend going with uh, either a sweet onion or a Vidalia or a Texas onion. Um, one of those sweeter onions. I wouldn't go with a white onion here. It, it'd be just a little bit um, overpowering. So um, it's just a rough chop. It doesn't have to be anything. Again, it's going to mostly disintegrate. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, when you watch a food show on TV, <laughs> they're always all about cutting things just exactly, you know, perfectly even, same size as your other items, but that's not something you have to worry about here. So just a rough chop, take the skin off, and then give it a chop. You can see with these onions, um, I'm just cutting them in quarters and then in slices. And you'll see at the very end um, that there is only the tiniest little bit of onion visible <laughs> in the final stew. Uh, it does mostly just go away. Okay, I wanna talk to you about the next ingredient, which is um, I put two habanero peppers in here. You can also use scotch bonnet peppers. Those, you might be a little afraid of them. I know I, I have second thoughts about putting such a hot pepper <laughs> in anything, but they, um, they're not too hot here. What you do, uh, just be careful handling them. Don't rub your eyes after you've cut them up, that kind of thing. How we do it is we're gonna cut them in half and then we're gonna cut the stem end off. Now see how the inside has a lot of white stuff pith, I guess is what that is, and seeds, you want to get that out of there because if you don't, it'll be too hot. So what I do is take a spoon, just a little table, you know, like you eat with, a spoon, and turn it so that you can scrape those seeds out. Be careful. Don't let the seeds pop up into your eye. I did that last time. I made oxtails and that hurts. <laughs> I 100% do not recommend popping a seed into your eye. 
Um, and then when you're done, wash your hands. Okay, that's all you have to worry about, about dealing with these little habanero peppers. See the spoon? Just gradually scrape those seeds out and then wash your hands. And then you're gonna give those also a rough chop and you won't see them in the finished product. Uh, they disintegrate too. Everything disintegrates in the instant pot when you're cooking it for 45 minutes. I mean, that's just the nature of things, right? So um, just use some care, chop them into little, you could even leave them in strips like this, but I think I gave them another crossways chop. So either habanero or scotch bonnet, if you're worried about the heat, just do one. You can always add red pepper flakes if you need to add some heat or some uh, hot sauce. You can do either one of those and add heat later if you need to. But the habanero gives it does give it some extra flavor in the um, stew. So we're gonna finish doing this and then I wanna show you the oxtails. Um, if you've never had oxtails, you need to know where to buy them. Uh, I can sometimes find them at Publix. I never find them at my local gro grocery store, though. Um, the best place that I found to get them is at a meat market, an actual meat market, uh, where they sell big cuts of meat, and they come like a whole tail. And you just ask them to cut them up for you, and they're going to ask you, uh, what size section and you're gonna say about inch and a half to two inches <laughs> if you have the choice like I've, I have seen them at fresh market where they're in a tray on ice and the butcher will let you select them if just see how some are skinny little pieces and some are great big meaty pieces we like the great big meaty pieces at my house so I, if I have a choice, I tell the butcher I'd like five or six great big ones. Uh, some people like the little skinny ones. That's not a lot of meat though. See, now look, see where I'm pointing? That's, see that yellow fat? You wanna cut that off as best you can. It's hard, to get, it's hard fat and it's hard to get off. Um, so use a sharp knife and be very careful. Don't let your knife slip. But I'll, I'm going to start doing that here now. But I want to finish telling you about oxtails and where to find them and how to select them. So don't get don't get worried about it. Don't get scared. It's it's just a tail. <laughs> it has a lot of meat on it though, and you just have to cook them properly in order to get the meat off. It takes a little practice to eat them, but they're very beefy and good. Normally, as a cook, I don't cut the much fat off of anything because fat adds flavor but in this case you can see the um the center and there's a lot of fat down in there How, why does the cow have such a fat tail i don't know i've never understood that but anyway there's lots of fat down inside of there and if you don't get those chunky pieces of hard fat off your stew will be just about too fatty so, and, and I'm not somebody who take, says that lightly. I like fat. <laughs> but, um, so you kind of poke it with your knife. Make sure you're going to be able to get your knife through it. Sometimes it fools you with the bone that's in there. That's a very big bone in there. Um, and then just any of that hard yellow fat, pull it off. Or, I mean, cut it off. You can't pull it off. And that's the best way to do it. You can if you, if you want to wash them. If you're concerned about, you know, it is a cow's tail, but it doesn't have it doesn't have skin and fur on it when you buy it. But you can rinse it off in some vinegar water. Don't splash it under the running water. Just put it in a bowl and splash it, splish it around with your hands to get it clean. If you would like to do that, that that is fine. You're not going to hurt anything that way. You don't have to do that because you're going to cook it under some pretty severe conditions in your in instant pot. Okay, now we're gonna do sear. See that saute button right there? That's how you sear things in your instant pot. So turn that on, it will come on without the lid. I'm adding the tiniest amount of oil. It's not really necessary because those oxtails have, still have a lot of fat on them. But um, I just added the tiniest amount just out of habit. And then allow your instant pot to heat for I don't know two or three minutes and then we're gonna add these oxtails and your pan will be hot so be careful I just put the big ones in there and let them sear for a minute and then add the smaller ones after 
they cook down just a little bit after I scooch them around for a minute. All we're doing here is developing flavor. If you forgot to do this part or you did not want to do this part, it's not really gonna hurt anything. And unless you have a very fine palette, you probably won't even notice. But um, it is kind of part of the recipe. If you're making the recipe the way that I have it written on the website, we would have marinated these oxtails first uh, in a in a solution of the same things I'm gonna put in the Instant Pot in a minute. And they would be far more sizzly and the sugar would make a lot more um, brown stuff on the bottom of the pan. So in a way that would actually develop more flavor than doing it this way, but I don't notice much difference in the final product when I make it this way as opposed to the way I wrote it on the website. I wrote it on the website that way just because um, it's more detailed and people like to have detailed things when they're reading them right in front of their eyes. So put this in here and let them saute um, or sear for, I don't know, three, four, or five minutes. It's kind of up to you. And then take some tongs or a fork and flip them over. Um, and you'll see they start to get, you know, a little crispy brown on, on the sides. And do both sides and the edges. Um, and that's how you sear in your Instant Pot. And it actually works, that's a pretty good function on the Instant Pot. I, I'm not the biggest fan of my Instant Pot. I liked my stovetop pressure cooker much better. Um, and I'm pretty sad that it died. <laughs> but um, this is a nice function of the Instant Pot. And, and I don't know, you can do this also in a, stovetop pressure cooker. If you have a stovetop pressure cooker, what you do is put your eye on high or medium high and brown things this way. Okay, now you can see I added the small pieces to the Instant Pot. Those small pieces have a lot, I think they have a lot of gristle in them. I'm not a big fan of those small pieces. Um, I like the big meaty pieces. But you know, you try these oxtails a time or two, see what you like. Leave me a comment. Maybe you like the small pieces better, you know, to each his own. Um, while these are searing, let's talk about how we serve these. So this makes, this is like oxtail stew. And at the end, we're gonna thicken the liquid that's in the pot and uh, we're gonna add beans. I love them with those cannellini beans. Delicious, really delicious. You could use any kind of white bean, butter bean, lima bean. You could do any of those beans. Um, I also like them with rice. So a good basmati rice or a jasmine rice, delicious. I like them with rice and beans. So um, that's up to you though. But I don't, I wouldn't try to make rice in here with the oxtails. That, that's questionable about how that might turn out. So <laughs> um, that's up to you. Okay, once these are seared, what we're gonna do is take the oxtails out. Somebody's leaving me a message. I don't know if you can hear that while I'm trying to record this or not, but it's quite loud. I apologize. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're going to deglaze the pan. Um, and there's a couple ways you could do this. In, in this video, how I'm gonna do it with water because I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna add better than bouillon, which makes like a broth. But if you have broth, you can add that. You could even add wine. But um, sometimes folks get upset when I make things with wine, so I'm not making it with wine today, but you could. Um, anyway, after these are browned on both sides, I'm going to remove them to a plate. And in a very ungreen manner, I'm putting them on a paper plate because I'm trying to limit how many dishes I have to wash. <laughs> but you could just put them on a regular plate. That's fine. Um, and then you'll see that there's brown stuff in the bottom of the pan and we're going to leave the instant pot on saute, leave it on that saute function. And um, we're gonna add a cup of water to the pan while it's sauteing. And that's gonna make that water bubble pretty quickly. It's gonna start boiling. And then I'm gonna take a wooden spoon and I'm gonna scrape up 
that stuff off the bottom of the pan. And that's gonna richen, make the, make the broth more rich and flavorful. That's a ton of flavor in there. And if you don't do that part, you're, you're really missing out on adding some real flavor to, your, to the stew that we are developing here. So in a minute, you'll see me do that, and that's why I'm doing that. And I recommend that you do that. But if you skipped this step and you just threw everything in the, in the Instant Pot, it's okay. But I would use beef broth or beef better than bouillon mixed in water to, um, don't just use plain old water is what I'm getting at. See how the bottom is kind of brown? That's what we want. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so um, there everything's, and you can see my pieces are not perfectly browned, especially those small pieces that I added later. Um, and that's okay, they really don't have to be perfect. This is, this is a very forgiving recipe. It is extremely forgiving. So if you're a new cook, <laughs> this might be one of the better recipes you know, more complicated recipes you could make because it is so forgiving. So here, here I am deglazing the pan and here's what you do. You just take a wooden spoon and scrape. It comes right up. It's amazing. This is a great way to clean a pot too. So if you're not making stew and you have a bunch of stuck on stuff on the bottom of your pan, you can put some water in it and boil it on your stove top, and that will help the stuff get unstuck. See what you learn here? <laughs> how to make flavorful stew and how to clean your pot all at the same time. This is almost like pre-cleaning. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I think so too. Okay, when we get this done, we're gonna add, um, I'm gonna put my better than bouillon in there, and I'm sorry, I'm using chicken bouillon because I just didn't have any more beef. It got left out off of the grocery store order. So put it in there, stir it around. It doesn't have to dissolve to dissolve completely. It's it will. It's gonna get a lot of heat <laughs> pretty soon. Okay, so that's in there, and now I'm gonna add my vegetables back. Um I'm salting that and adding a little pepper. I like to add salt in layers I feel like you can taste like if I hadn't salted the meat when I put it in there I feel like when I ate the final stew somehow the meat wouldn't wouldn't have as much flavor as the stew part I may be just weird but that's just what I think so uh, anyway that was minced garlic I put in there you could use fresh garlic that's not gonna hurt anything it'd be delicious too it's just minced garlic is uh pretty easy to use in this in this way <clears throat> and you're gonna see when I get to adding the vegetables and stuff that I put a couple bay leaves in here just make sure you fish those back out at the end of the process I don't you could probably pressure cook a bay leaf forever and it would never get soft <laughs> it's not something people want to eat but it does add delicious flavor so okay here goes the veggies that we chopped earlier, the habanero, the green onion, the yellow onion, the carrots. You could put celery in here. That's not gonna hurt anything either. And it's a nice flavor too. It's a classic flavor that most people are familiar with. Okay, now we're gonna add our oxtails back. And every time you add these back, there's gonna be juices on the plate. Just put those in there too. That's, that's good, that adds flavor. Okay, so if you are following the recipe on the website, you won't do this step because all of this was added, this was in the marinade. But you will add the marinade from the bag. I know, you're probably saying, oh, you can't do that. It's had the tails soaking in it. Right, the tails soaked in it and then we browned the tails and now we're gonna cook the devil out of it inside this Instant Pot, so it it's fine. If you weren't cooking it, then that would be a problem, but we are cooking it, so um, it, it's fine, just add it. So what I'm adding here is I added um, a cup of the better than bouillon with, in a cup of water, a teaspoon of that in a cup of water, two teaspoons of uh, garlic powder, 
a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of browning. That's what it was, that little thick brown stuff. There's my garlic powder. Um, a whole yellow onion, a bunch, a bunch of green onions, or three green onions is what I added. A tablespoon of minced garlic, two bay leaves. What I did was one bay leaf and what I thought amounted to about three pieces, <laughs> making a whole other bay leaf. Um, I added two habanero peppers. You could just do one. Three tablespoons of ketchup and a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And then a th uh, about a third of a cup of brown sugar, which I put on last so that it makes a nice coating over the top of those um, <clears throat> oxtails. So then you just put the lid on and you're gonna let it, oh, here's Worcestershire sauce. That's three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I think I forgot to say that a minute ago. Um, here's the brown sugar. And you can see, I just, I'm not measuring anything. I eyeball things like this. If you're baking, you have to measure, and you have to measure very carefully, and you have to level off the top of the cup as you're baking. But if you're doing um, savory cooking, oh my gosh, my hair. Uh, if you're doing savory cooking like this, it's okay to eyeball, as long as you're pretty good at catching what you're, you do with your eyeballs. Okay, now we're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna let it cook at full pressure for 45 minutes. I'm adding an extra cup of water um, so that it cooks properly. I've had it happen that, um, okay, check your Instant Pot. Uh, this is the number one problem I have with the Instant Pot. Check the Instant Pot. Make sure that seal is on there. That's gonna go on the little wire ring appropriately. Make sure your little um, button goes up and down. Make sure you can turn your steam valve so that it turns to the back. That's You want it towards the back. Now we're going to set it for 45 minutes and we're going to let it go. We're going to make sure that little button rises and then, and then we're just going to let it do a natural release. And what that means, oh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, and what that means is that that button returned down by itself. We didn't release any steam or anything. Okay, see how that's real soupy right now? That's normal. Oh, look at that. That meat is falling off of the bone. Delicious. Okay, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove these to a plate again. And I'm using a paper plate, so ungreen. Um, we're gonna remove these to a paper plate Anytime I see a bay leaf, I'm gonna pull it out of there and throw it out. Don't want bay leaves. <clears throat> and then we're gonna thicken the stew. And the way we're gonna thicken the stew is with cornstarch. So you want, I use about two tablespoons of cornstarch. And then it's gonna be about four tablespoons of water. And it's gonna be hard. You'll see when I'm trying to mix it, it's hard to mix it. And then all at once it gets loose, and it's kind of the consistency of milk. And you, when you put the water in, it would make sense to just add some of that broth to your cornstarch, right? No, don't do that. that. That broth is hot. And if you add hot water or even warm water, it'll, you'll ruin it. So you, it has to be cold water that you add to your cornstarch. Make it the consistency of milk, pour it in, mix it and then it will thicken. But you wanna mix it for a, a good minute to let it get fully incorporated. And then I add two cans of cannellini beans because I really like beans. If you're not crazy about beans, just add one can. If you don't like beans at all, don't add beans. Add some cooked rice. It's up to you, it's your stew. And then you also wanna add some lime juice, which I didn't catch on camera here but it's important to have that acid in there. If you don't have lime, add lemon. If you don't have lemon, add vinegar, um, a teaspoon. If you just need that brightness added to your stew. And that's really, that's the whole thing. 
That's all you have to do. This is a delicious recipe. It, I'm gonna tell you right now, oxtails are expensive and I have no idea why they're expensive. You would think that that cut of meat would not be the most popular cut of meat, but it's very popular right now and they're very expensive. And I guess a cow only has one tail for the whole rest of the, <laughs> for the whole rest of the body, you get one tail. So almost a delicacy. <clears throat> Anyway, see how hard that is to mix? That's normal. I think I had to add more. Yeah, I did have to add a little more water. But just don't overdo it. If you get too much water when you're mixing, then somehow it just doesn't want to thicken right when you pour it into your stew. It's crazy how cornstarch works. I read the other day, it has a, cornstarch has a special name. <laughs> it's a certain kind of liquid. And I can't remember what the word is, but it's a different word. Okay, it's gonna lighten the stew. See how that made that a lighter color? That's normal. And it will thicken, it takes it a few minutes, so don't think that it should be thickening instantly. It doesn't do it instantly. It takes a few minutes for it to kind of bloom or whatever the word is. Anyway, so done that. Now, here's my beans. You wanna pour the beans off and I didn't mean for some of that bean juice to fall in there but it sure did it. Drain your beans and then put your beans in. I put again two cans. You can do one or you can leave it off all together and do rice. Anyway this is almost done. I'm just going to leave it on the saute function for a minute or two to heat the whole thing back up and then it's done and then you just put it in a lovely bowl Serve it over some rice, maybe, or some noodles. This would be delicious. Get a pretty green vegetable to have, maybe a bright green salad. These are really good with mustard greens and turnip greens, too. You know, if you want to go full-on southern dinner, that would be a great flair to add. Um, anyway, put it in a nice bowl, and it, may, it has the prettiest colors. Those, it's a real rich brown color with orange and those white beans. It's just, it's gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's lovely. Okay, I hope you enjoy this. If you have questions about how to do this, go over to Loaves and Dishes website, loavesanddishes.net, and leave a comment, and I will answer your question. Or you can leave a comment here. Sarah catches these comments. If she doesn't know the answer, she'll call me, and we'll talk about it, and she'll leave you an answer. So I don't think Sarah makes oxtails, so that's why I'm doing this video, because I do make oxtails, and I love them. Um, anyway, Here's some pictures of the final product. Yours will look just as good, I promise. You can do this. This is an easy Instant Pot recipe. And I'll see you next time, or the next time I make a video. <laughs> there you go. You have a good day. And remember, if you've got a question, I'm here to answer your questions, and I'll help you. So have a good one. Bye-bye.